You know, in today's bass fishing, there are so many different kinds of baits that you can catch bass on. We thought it'd be fun to have a show directed at all the different classes of baits you use to fish and catch bass. Thanks for joining us. This is Fishing and Hunting Texas. From Mexico to Louisiana, the Red River down to the Laguna Madre, Texas is one big playground. Join professional bass fisherman and three-time FLW Angler of the Year, Clark Wendland, as he takes you on some of the best outdoor adventures the Lone Star State has to offer. This is Fishing and Hunting Texas. an old school fisherman and I'll talk about an old school bait, Carolina rig. It's not very many people's favorite bait. It kind of gets a bad rap because it's just not real sexy. It's just the, you know, you just throw it out there and you just drag it in, just feel in the bottom, but it can catch some great fish. I'm just going to show you my rig up on a Carolina rig and I throw it a fair amount. You wouldn't think I would. I like fishing fast. I like power fishing, but if I've got to slow down on big flats, Starting in February, I can catch some big fish with a Carolina rig. Coming up, that's a good one. Maybe not quite as big as I thought. As far as my rig up goes, Tour grade tungsten, this is a three quarter. It, I put a three quarter on because that's probably the most common weight that I would use. I put a glass bead on it right above that and then I've just got a black barrel swivel. As far as my line goes, <clears throat> your, your line that's on your main line, it doesn't really matter what it is. You know, something you can cast good, something that you know is strong enough for the situation. Probably 16 pound sun line, I prefer fluorocarbon. So I'd probably throw sniper on that. And then as far as your leader goes, it can sometimes it's the exact same size. It's almost never gonna be heavier, but it can be lighter. It could be 14, it could be 12, it could be 10. On this one right here, I've got 14, same line sniper. And then my hook, and the hook I've got on here is an owner. This is actually a wide gap plus. That wide gap plus is a, fits this bait really good, which is a Strike King Rage Hog. And the Rage Hog is just a, a little small creature bait. I might Carolina rig several different baits. I, lo I love the Strike King creature, but I also like just a straight worm from time to time. Though, either one of those will work really, really well. I like Green Pumpkin probably the best. That's what I've got on right here. You know, a Carolina rig is something that you think of when you're fishing flat stuff. Something that's, you know, you got flat with a small break off of it or on the edges of flats. That's where you really see it. You're looking for those hard spots, either gravel or rock, something hard, or maybe a bear spot if you're fishing grass. In, in Texas, in East Texas, a lot of times you catch a ton of fish when you're working in the pre-spawn, Carolina rigging those hard spots, those bare spots right around the inside grass lines. And those inside grass line spots, those big fish can load up on and you can really catch some great fish. So, you know, a Carolina rig, not the sexiest rig in the whole world, but one that's incredibly effective and you can catch some big fish. You know, probably my very favorite bait to fish up and around beds, whether I'm flipping or sight fishing or just pitching sand spots, is a Strike King tube. I want to show you my rig up. I've got a bobber stopper on there, a Strike King tour grade tungsten weight. This one here is 5 sixteenths. I might fish 3 eighths. I might fish all the way down to an eighth. It depends on the situation, how much cover there is. As far as my hook goes, this is an owner wide gap plus. And when I run that hook all the way through there, I skin hook it right here. So my, my finger's not getting touched at all. You can fish it around heavy grass, heavy reeds. You can fish it in open stuff around wood and it's almost never going to get hung. There it is. fish on a bed, you know, when those males get on that bed like that, a lot of times they don't want to bite and you'll get a bite and you'll miss it. And you'll get another bite and you'll miss it, whether you can see him or not. This one bit like three times before I finally hooked him and you gotta be persistent. Now the thing about it is, is, is the reason that I love this bait is, is when you're fishing it, you put it on a bed 
and you just barely shake it, the weight's gonna keep the bait there and then the tentacles will just kind of flare up. They just flare up. And so to me, you barely move the bait and that fish notices that it moves. Whether you're just pitching or whether you're just actually working one, you can see a tube, Strike King tube. This is a three and a half inch. I'd also throw it a four and a half inch. Both of them work really well. Hey, Clark will be right back with more on his favorite baits here on Fishing and Hunting. As people who love the outdoors, we know what we stand for. We stand for fish, wildlife, and conserving the places they call home. We stand for the traditions we inherited and that we must pass on. We stand for great gear, fair prices, expert service, and memorable experiences. At Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's, we stand together for you. Groundbreaking designs unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Evan Rude E-Tech, spend more time on the water. Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. You know, to catch fish, oftentimes you have no choice but to get hung. You gotta get your bait in where the fish are. Here's a tip that talks about a pole that'll help you get your bait unhung. You know, when you get a bait hung, at least in my case, I really want to get that bait back. And the reason is, it's not because how much that bait costs, which that is a good reason. Most of the time, it's because I've got confidence in that bait. If I'm throwing it, it's a bait I got confidence in. I've caught some fish on it, it's got teeth marks on it. It's one that I really want to get back. There's a tool I use to get those baits back. TH Marine Money Pole. This rod right here will get down to about 20 feet. Now I'm gonna show you just kind of how it works and how easy it is. If I'm really thinking I'm gonna be throwing a bait that, that I'm gonna get hung a lot, it extends, just telescopes out. I can extend it all the way. It goes to about 20 feet. I just put it on my line. And then I run that down there. And you know, a lot of times you'll stick your rod in the water to get one unhung. But with this pole right here, just take it, push it, and boom. And then what I do is, is I just untwist it off the bait, and there's the bait coming up right there. And I take my pole, put it up, and it really doesn't even fray my line. A lot of times, I won't even retie. I'll just cast it right back out there and catch another fish. T&H Marine money pole, every bit worth the investment. You know, one of my very favorite ways to fish pre-spawn during February, kind of leading up into the spawn on lakes that got stationary docks on them, either metal or wood is with a jig. This is a Strike King skipping jig, half ounce. I've got a Rage Menace trailer, both of them in green pumpkin. The reason I like it so much is those big fish will get around those docks. They'll get up under the docks. Sometimes they'll be on the shallow parts, sometimes they'll be on the deep parts. But those docks are places that they actually stage before they're gonna go spawn. Get in here. Get this football right here. We just put our boat in the water, first bite of the day, flipping. And when I say flipping, we're talking about lots of different ways to fish. Pitching, skipping, flipping, all of those are trying to access parts of the water that are different, that you can't get to with just a normal cast. Nice three pounder to start the day right there. 
It's still a pattern though. You've got to pattern the docks, whether they be docks on points, docks in the backs of creeks, docks that are isolated, docks that are stretches that are deeper, stretches that are shallower. So you still got to pay just as much attention, but docks can really produce some big fish. Now that one was way up shallow. The first couple we caught were out deeper on the dock. That one was right Oh, I'll get in here. You see a little bit of grass right there, but that fish was way up under that dock. And every fish is just a little bit different. Good, healthy looking fish up under that dock. There's my jig. I love the skipping jig because I can actually slide it way up under that dock, skip it way up under there and work every bit of the dock. You gotta have a little bit of room. I need about that much to really skip well. If it's only that far, a lot of times the skip will hit and it'll still hit the dock. But if you got that much room, you can slide it up under there. Sometimes they're on the outside poles, sometimes they're at the very back. But fishing stationary docks leading up to the spawn is a way you can catch some huge bags of fish. Look at this fat football of a fish right here. Look at that fish, that is so pretty right there. Man. Now I was actually working that bait pretty slow. I had skipped way up under that dock. And that's one thing we found on these docks today, you gotta be way up under there. One thing you gotta realize is, is that you know it, next day they may be on the outside and you may be fishing something fast, but today it's gotta be flipping or skipping, pitching something up under the dock. That fish, beautiful fish. Stay tuned, we've got more tips coming up on Fishing and Hunting Texas. You sons of fishes. Ain't enough fish on this lake for two clubs. Really? Well, we see plenty of fish live with pan optics. Yep. Dang, we should get pan optics. Maybe we'll just take yours. What's going on here? You boys have license? Yes, yes sir. sir. Nope. This portion of Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you in part by Strike King. Owner Perfection and Hooks. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. And by TH Marine. You know, so far the tips in this show have talked about fishing bait slow. Baits you either crawl across the bottom or flip. But I really love fishing baits fast. This next segment centers on fishing baits fast but one thing to think about on reeling a bait fast is is what gear ratio do you need on your reel here's a tip to start us off you know one thing to consider when buying a reel is is gear ratio what gear ratio do i need for different situations well i use two different main gear ratios i've got johnny moore's signature series reels i've got a 6.8 to 1 and i've got an 8.3 to 1 and i interchange them all the time Usually for baits that are like faster type baits, like a square bill, maybe a, um, a vibrating jig, a rattling bait, um, so I'm going to throw an 8.3 to 1, maybe a buzz bait, sometimes flipping because those fish will come in real fast. A 6.8 to 1, a lot of times, is what I'm just going to use on baits that I just really want to slow down. I don't like slower gear ratios than that. I like either a 6.8 or 8.3. I love the 8.3 for faster top waters and covering water. Think about your gear ratio before you buy your reel. You know, I'm a power fisherman, and one of my very favorite baits to power fish with is a square bill crankbait. This is a KVD 1.5 in natural shad. I love this color. You know, as far as colors go, I usually like something in, you know, either a shad color or a chartreuse or sometimes crawfish. 
These baits are extremely versatile. I fish it on a Tournament ZX crankshaft rod, so it's a little bit more limber rod. It actually does really well. It's a bait you wind pretty fast because when you wind it, it'll actually, you know, it actually moves and moves back and forth. It's not a bait that tracks perfectly true, but that is part of what makes the bait really good. You know, when you're throwing a spinner bait, usually the spinner bait's tracking right back to you. When you throw this in the water, it'll go a little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit left, a little bit right. But the whole key to it is, is you got to be reeling it pretty fast. The other cool thing is, is it comes in all kinds of different sizes. I want to show you, this is just one of my crankbait boxes right here. I've got my 1.0, 1 1.5, and 2.5s in here. This one here is actually a 4.0, and then there's an 8.0. So you can fish whatever size bait you got, and if you want to get a little di bit deeper, the higher numbers typically get just a little bit deeper. It's an extremely versatile bait. During the fall, when they're keying on shad, it's a must throw. There's one. Woo, that's a big one. at the size of this brute. They started pulling water and, oh, he choked it. that one. Oh, that's a good one. That is a giant right there now. Look at that fish. You know, I've caught a lot of fish over the past couple of years with the Strike King XD series of baits. When I say XD, I'm talking about 10XD, 8XD, 6XD, 5XD. Another bait that's a really small profile that I love fishing late spawn because a lot of times you'll see those really small shad is a 3XD. This bait probably runs 10, 12 feet depending on what line you've got it on. I've got it on 14 pound Sunline Sniper today, but this bait right here will get a lot of bites. What happened today is, is we actually saw some blowing up. And I was throwing a 1.5, but I felt like that those fish, once they'd quit blowing up, would actually go just a little bit deeper. And so, and so when they weren't schooling, I'd actually get to a lot of those fish coming over those grass clumps with the 3XD. Got the small profile, gets really deep, it hunts really good. I already got a lot of confidence in this series of baits because I've caught a ton of fish on them, especially the 6XD and 8XD last year at Fayette County. The 3XD... I hear them blowing up over to the side of me. The 3XD will get a ton of bites, and this bait was the key to us catching fish today. What's so cool is, is we got here and you know a lot of times you've got to figure out what will catch fish when they're breaking the surface and these fish are you know they're popping up out of the water and and but they're good ones it's not like they're little i switch to a 3xd 3xd is a little bait these shad are little but it gets deep and that's got to be the key after the break clark will wrap up with a few tips on his bait selection i love being out here on the tour it's all about chasing the unseen in the toughest conditions. My gear is my edge, my advantage. It's what keeps me at the top of my game. Year after year. Wiley X with removable gaskets to block wind, dust, and peripheral light. Approximately 30,000 cases of Lyme disease happen each year in the United States. The main culprit, ticks. Stop and kill ticks in the outdoors with Sawyer's permethrin insect repellents. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. This portion of Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you in part by Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler, Sunline, 
the strength to guarantee your confidence and by outdoor action. Watch the outdoors anytime. You know, one thing that can tell you a lot about what class of bait to fish is, is what the water temperature is. It's something I always look at when I put my boat in the water. Here's a tip that starts off talking about water temperatures. You know, in the fall, one of the places I always start is when I put my boat in the water, I, I turn on my electronics and I look at water temperature. What I want to know is, is how cool that water's gotten. Because what happens is, as the water starts to cool, bass are going to start usually moving a little bit shallower. They, they even in August, as the water's even maybe getting hotter, they start moving shallower because the water quality offshore is so poor. But as, as the water gets colder, I start thinking shallower and shallower. And so a lot of times fish will get right up on the bank and they'll chase big shad or they may be eating crawfish or they may be chasing brim. Everything is starting to push towards shallower water. The place to start is look at your water temperature and see where it is. I have seen fish in tournaments. There was one tournament at Grand Lake years ago. It was a BASS tournament. A guy named Jim Morton won on a buzz bait, 50 degree water temperature. So as water gets colder, you can still catch them really shallow and you can even catch them on top water. Just keep an eye on that water temperature. See what it is when you start the day and it'll help you catch a few more fish. Get out of here, dude. Look how fat that dude is. Come on. I am not kidding you. It looks like a blue or a crappie or something. It's just like it's not even the same species. You know, one bait I've almost always got tied on and sitting in my rod box is a Strike King popping perch. The cool thing about this bait is is you can fish it in so many different situations. Whether it's around light grass, heavy grass, you can fish it around wood cover, throw it up around rocks, you can fish it slow, you can fish it fast. Hey, you can even throw it up around docks. That's a good one. That is so unbelievably awesome right there. What happened was, is on this very dock just a minute ago, I get a bite and he, the reason I'm throwing, you know, it doesn't look like the kind of place that you'd throw a popping perch. But the reason I was throwing it was, is, you know, sometimes skipping up under docks, you can't skip a hard bait under there, but a soft bait like this, you can sling it up under there. And I had a bite and I was sitting over there and I thought, you know, maybe I can get it way up under there. Got it way up under there, four and a half pounder. That's awesome. He chomped it. You know, with the cup lift the way it is, people think, well, hey, you need to just bloop this bait in. But there's a lot of different ways you can work it. In real heavy grass, the bait won't work side to side. So you've got to just fish it pretty slow, kind of pop it along. Out in open water, it can either be fast or slow. A lot of times walking it's the best way to do it. You basically got to give a little bit of slack each time to get it to walk really well back and forth. But when you look at it on the water, the way the tail flares out, it looks like a wounded perch, exactly what the name is. Hey, popping perch will catch you a ton of bass. You know, when it comes to bass fishing, there are a ton of different baits you can throw. We've enjoyed bringing you today's show. If you get the opportunity, check out our website, Facebook, or Instagram. Let us know where you'd like to see us fish all around this great state. We'd love to hear from you. Fishing and Hunting Texas is a CareCo TV production. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.